I'm Lauren Whitehurst. I'm a certified personal trainer and certified nutrition coach. Hi, I'm Sunny Livencott. I'm a certified professional life coach and a certified brain health professional. We also have Angela Salyers, who is a licensed professional counselor, and the three of us together make up Whole, whole Life Vitality. Vitality. We teach Whole Life Vitality of the mind, body, and soul, bringing the physical, emotional, and spiritual together for whole life wellness. Welcome back, friends. We are here again with the amazing Rebecca Beavers. Rebecca has a background in nutrition, in coaching nutrition, and helping people walk them through adjusting their nutrition. And as you all know, that is what I do as well. So for this podcast today, talking about all of the fad diets and the crazes and the warped thinking that happens surrounding New Year's resolutions, then I thought, who better to do this podcast with than the amazing Rebecca Beavers? Wow, I feel so honored that you would choose me. Yes, I do. It's so crazy because, you know, when you think about all the things that you do, like over a lifetime, you're like, wow, I've lived so many lives, but like for real. So I do have a background in nutrition coaching and fitness um, coaching as well. I actually owned like a fitness franchise for a few years. I did training for years and um, I'm not actively pursuing that career path currently. But all of that stuff, I just feel like it's like that compound effect where you're like learning, 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 and then you get somewhere and you're like, wow, I have all of this knowledge and all of this information and it's gotten me here to this place. And it's like, now you're kind of, I don't know, able to really like help and support other people, right? Or like have a conversation like this on your podcast. So I'm really excited to talk about this topic today with you. It's so funny that you say that because just yesterday I was talking to a client and talking about how years ago, like 17 years ago, I got the flu shot. That was the last time I got the flu shot. <laughs> and when I got it, I got it because my employer at the time requested that all of the employees get the flu shot. And so I was like, okay, cool. You know, we'll do it. And I was sicker that year than I think I've ever been. I had bronchitis four times that year. Just that, when I say that year, I mean that season, like that winter season that year, four times. And it was brutal. I was doing all the things right to try and get rid of it. I was taking the antibiotics. I was doing the coating cough syrup. I was in and out of the doctor. And I look back on that time in my life and think, man, if I could go back and tell 23 year old me, mm -hmm. all of the things that I know now wow, I would not have been sick four times for an extended period of time with bronchitis yeah. that season. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hi, what, is it, what is that saying? Hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? You're like, sure. if only I knew. But what's yes. so cool is like, now you do know. So now not only do you know to benefit yourself and your family, but also like you have this incredible podcast where you're going to get to share this information with other people. And then they're going to know because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, and then when people get frustrated because they don't know something, then I'm like, who taught you? Have you ever learned? Because right. what if no one had ever told us how to talk? What if we were raised in a family where literally no one spoke and we all just communicated with hand gestures? Would you have ever learned if you were never surrounded by anyone who actually spoke words? And yet here you are speaking proficiently, but you had to learn somehow. And just like anything yeah. else, we all have to learn somehow. So this time of year, I get especially fired up about nutrition because so many people are talking about diets in the new year. And let me tell you, I have done them all. <laughs> I've done them all. I yeah. think I started my first diet when I was like 14 because I read a book about health and fitness and it said, you know, eat this way to look this way. And I was like, okay, sure, mm -hmm. I'll do that. Yeah. And so I started my first diet at 14 and then I've tried everything under the sun since then. And what I've gained 
with all that hindsight information is <laughs> it none of it is sustainable. Anytime that you are doing something that you're modifying your quote unquote diet so extreme, it's not going to be sustainable. And so when you're looking at a goal, when it comes to your health, when it comes to your body, when it comes to your nutrition, when it comes to getting to a point that you have spent the whole year working on yourself and you get to December and you make your way from December 1st to January 1st and that January 1st, you are not less healthy, less fit, less, you don't feel less amazing mm -hmm. than you did on December 1st. That's the goal, right? Yeah. And a, a fad diet, and I, I say fad diet because we're talking about any kind of diet that takes out any, any major macronutrient, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you're doing low carb, if you're doing low fat, if you're, if you've gone vegan to lose weight, like anytime that you're taking something out, like a big part of your diet out, that's when we're talking lack of sustainability. Right. Yeah. So I know that you teach very similar to that. We teach whole food, real <laughs> food. I tell people yeah. if God made it, it's probably fine for you to eat. And yeah. if man made it, it's probably not so fine for you to eat. <laughs> Think about how our, how our bodies were designed and yeah. then the food that was created to fuel the bodies that were, you know, divinely made. So then let's talk about how those are going to work. So when you sit down with a client and they're feeling a little bit in the dark about what they should do, because I think that this is something that most people get really overwhelmed with really quickly. It's all that, is this okay? Is this bad? Is this good? Is is mm -hmm. this something that's going to, and then somehow it becomes this shame filled spiral that we go through in our head. Then what do you tell them? Where do you start? Yeah, I think there have been many times where I've sat down, you know, face to face with a client and I've been shocked at what they don't know. But like you said earlier, it's because nobody's ever taught them. Yeah. And, and I was that person at one point and I have to remember that, like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I think for me, yes, exactly what you're saying about whole food, real food. And that's really where I start is educating on what real food is, because a lot of people don't have that base foundational knowledge of like what is real food and like you're saying it's food that is god made god created food it's grown in the ground it's not grown in a laboratory somewhere so that's really where i start um and then i really like to go through and just gain a little bit of knowledge on like what their life is like because yeah. in order for this to become their lifestyle it has to fit into what their lifestyle is. You know, you're talking about sustainability. Fad diets are not sustainable. They're maybe here for now, but over your course of your lifetime, like if we're living 60, 70, 80, my granddad just turned 100 in September. Like if we're living, I know, if we're living that long, is this something that you can see yourself doing every day for the rest of your life? And if exactly. the answer to that is no, then it's not sustainable. Yeah. If this is a countdown timer, if you say, mm -hmm. okay, um, how, how soon can I stop this? When can I go back to, or, okay, I'll, I'll eat salads for a week. And then I'm just going to go back to what I've always done. Well, think about how long it took you to get to where you are. And you're extremely proficient at that. You can do where you are on autopilot. You eat what you're eating. You live how you're living. Your activity level is going to look the exact same. And it's gotten your body exactly where it is now. So if there's something that you want to change, you think about that change and what you want. Is there a deadline on that? Is there a deadline on your right. healthy body? You know, you want right. that forever. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. exactly what you're saying. What does your lifestyle look like? What can you mm -hmm. do? Are you the kind of person who has the time, the energy, and even the mental capacity to make everything from scratch? Because right. I'm not. 
<laughs> I don't right. I don't have that available to me right now. No. And I don't really know, honestly, Lauren, a lot of people that do. And especially yeah. when I was working with clients, that was kind of their number one thing was like, I don't have the time. Yeah. So that was a big part of it too, is like taking people through, well, how do we interweave this into your life, into your daily routine, into your daily schedule? And you know, what are the things that you can do? What are the things that you maybe need to outsource? What are those obstacles that you're going to bump up against that you know are coming because they've come every other time you've tried to make a change yeah. and how, and when that happens, when you bump up against those obstacles, instead of going like, okay, forget it. This is too much. This is too hard. Right. We already have a plan in place to overcome those obstacles, you know? So that's not an issue. Like maybe it has been in the past. Yeah. When you look at this as the rest of your life, mm -hmm. then you have to get really specific about what you want because this is your life. This is the rest of your life. And then if you eat cookies for breakfast, like I did this morning, my, <laughs> my really yummy Christmassy ginger snap, also homemade, made from scratch, really fantastic ingredients, but it yeah. was still a cookie for breakfast then I'm like, okay, does that ruin the rest of my day? Does it ruin the rest of my week? Is this who I am now? Am I just the kind of person who eats cookies for breakfast every single day? Or did I just have a cookie for breakfast? <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know a lot of people that aren't having cookies for breakfast right now. Um, you know, we're how many days post Christmas? Yep. <laughs> so I think if yep. you're just know you're not alone. We're, we're here too. Cheers. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's living every day as if it was day one, waking up every day and making mm -hmm. the choice again and again, and again to live this way. So uh, regularly, what's like a normal breakfast for you, Rebecca? Okay. So for me personally, I really like to focus on getting protein in, in the earlier part of my day, because I'm not a really great protein eater. Um, that's not necessarily the things that I gravitate towards, but I feel better in my body when I'm getting more protein. So um, I love, I, I call them grandma oats, like grandma oatmeal. And it's like a save, it's a twist on oatmeal. It's like a savory oat. So I'll do like um, rolled oats, like the big regular, less processed, yeah. the better, right? rolled oats and I'll do it like in bone broth and then I'll add like maybe we have chickens so I'll put an egg on top of that with um some flaky salt of course because the flaky salt is the best and maybe like a little bit of mozzarella cheese that I really like um and that my body really likes body really likes this specific type of mozzarella cheese yeah so that's been kind of, that's my go-to it's it's savory, it's warm, it kind of gets, you know, protein going. Sometimes I'll add chicken to that. We raise our own chickens. So if I have chicken um, easily accessible in the morning, I'll add chicken to that. Um, and I had steak this week that was already cooked. And so I added like a little bit of steak, like beef to that. Sometimes we have elk or venison. So um, yeah, that's my regular breakfast. What about you? Well, and you've done variations of that grandma oatmeal over the course of the time that I've known you and it's gone yeah. from sweet to savory and kind of back and forth with mm -hmm. sweet having, you know, walnuts or cocoa nibs or maple syrup yeah. or, you know, whatever. I've seen it so many different ways, but you really love your oats. Pumpkin seeds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Um, okay. Hang on for me. So as we know, because I've talked about it so many times on here, I am, I'm ADD. I have, I have ADD. I'm not, I am not ADD. I have ADD. My brain functions in a neurodivergent capacity. And that being said, I tend to hyper fixate on foods. So I'll get into a place where I eat the exact same thing for days or weeks or months. I'm not even kidding. Like every single day. And then I, I'm just done with it. Like cannot even imagine ever eating it again. Right. So one of my all time favorite breakfasts that I hyper fixated on for a long time are these amazing banana peanut butter protein muffins. They have like mm. 
dark chocolate chocolate chips in them. Oh my gosh, they're so good. I'm, I'm salivating just thinking about them. The I know. recipe, the recipe is on our Instagram and also on our blog. So if you people are looking for that recipe, it's in there. And oh my gosh, they're so good. They're also gluten free because I use my oats and I just grind my oats in my blender and use that as the base. So it's kind of like your oatmeal, but it's baked yeah. and ready to go. So in muffin I can form in the muffin <laughs> form. Yeah. So I can grab and go pretty easily with that, but I am definitely a grab and go kind of breakfast eater because most mornings mm -hmm. I don't have time to sit and savor. And I, that's just not the season of life that I'm in right now. Right. So I try to do things like that, or I'll um, make myself a little egg sandwich Sometimes I'll make those and freeze those and have them ready to go, or I'll just scramble a couple of eggs and have that. Uh, yesterday, I fried up some tofu. So I have tofu in the fridge to just grab and go when I need that. So just, I'm a grab and go kind of girl. Yeah. But when it comes to meals, that's what I found. Whatever is available to grab, I will. So mm -hmm. if that means that I have a pantry full of processed foods, then that's what I'll grab and take. Yeah. And that's what I'll end up consuming. But if I have prepped in my refrigerator, uh, some protein, some produce, some good carbohydrate sources, some healthy fats, then that's what I'll grab and go. I've right. even done, if I roast, I love to roast giant pans of vegetables and I'll, whatever looks good, I'll walk to the produce department and whatever looks good that day, I just grab it, toss it in the cart, chop it all up, put it in a big pan with some olive oil and some spices and roast it all together. Then I take the whole thing and put it in gallon sized Ziploc bags and toss it in my fridge. That can be any meal for me. Yeah. That can be breakfast, that can be lunch, that can be dinner. It can be any meal for me. Yeah, I love it. I love that you know, so you've learned yourself enough to know, like, it has to be something grab and go. And that's something like for other people to sit down and look at your life and go like, okay, am I more kind of like a Lauren, where I'm on the go a lot, and I need things that are easily accessible. So I need to think ahead, like you're saying, yeah. I'm roasting the big pan of veggies for the week because I know I need to grab and go those things. So it's like, and that's how you kind of can sit down and look at what do I need to do? What kind of um, things do I need to implement into my schedule? So maybe it's like, there's a day where you roast the veggies, all the veggies and get them in your fridge, yes. you know, or there's a day where you, you know, do your hard boiled eggs because I love a good hard boiled egg, a grab and go. Mm -hmm. My kids love hard boiled eggs too. You Same. know, like, so I think that's so wise to know, like, okay, I've got to have a plan. There's got to be some kind of plan in place for me to be successful. There's so much power in knowing yourself and taking yeah. time to look in the mirror and what am I really willing to do? I spent so much of my life reading books on diets and having all the good intentions, right? And saying, okay, wow, this person is doing this and they're making these meals and they're living this way. And, you know, I'm just going to work out every single day and I'm only going to eat fruits and vegetables for the rest of my life. <laughs> How many times have we, have we made those deals with ourselves though? You know, like, oh, yeah. I don't like myself where I am. So I don't know where I want to be. I just know I don't want to be here. So I'm going to follow yeah. whatever extreme method I can find at the moment to be anywhere but here. Mm-hmm. But it's taking time to look and decide what do you actually want? What do you like? If you make yeah. a list of all the foods that you like, <laughs> that you enjoy, what produce do you like? What protein do you enjoy? What fats do you enjoy? What grains do you enjoy? And, you know, make it into those four categories. And some people, I love quinoa. I don't love brown rice. I just don't like I like white rice, jasmine rice, basmati rice, all the different rice. I don't love brown rice. I'll eat it. I just don't love it. And so if it's yeah. in my pan, if it's in my fridge, I'm way more likely to grab the white rice or the quinoa than I am to grab the brown rice. So 
I, it, does that make it better or worse for me? I don't know. I think the grass is greener yeah. where you water it. You know, yeah. it, the, the quinoa is fine. It's a fine source. It doesn't have to be brown rice to be good for me, you know? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. It's so funny. One time I served my family quinoa and they literally thought I was trying to poison them. They were like, what is this? <laughs> And I was like, it's quinoa, guys. And they were like, never make this again. They were so offended. What? It's so funny. Yeah. But like, that's the thing too, is like, for me, a big part of like what I'm eating is like what I don't want to make myself a meal and then like have to make my family a different meal. Like Agreed. I want it to be a very cohesive thing. And so like whatever I'm cooking, we're all eating, you know, there's three other people in my family. So like for the quinoa, like you're saying, I'm a no on the brown rice. Okay. But I think like for the quinoa for them, they're like, we're a no on that. So yeah. I just know, okay, well, I'm not going to make the quinoa. I'm going to, you know, I'll do the brown rice or I'll do, you know, a different kind of starch or something like that. But it's so funny. Yeah. I'll never forget the first time I made quinoa for them. And I thought it was great. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. So if I make it, it's just for me. But, that is yeah. so funny. Well, okay. one thing that I have taught my children and that it took me a while to understand is that your taste buds turn over like as a new ones are created every uh -huh. two weeks. I had no idea it was so fast. Mm -hmm. Every two weeks, old taste buds die off. New taste buds are created. There was a time in my life when the taste of mango made me gag. <laughs> could not handle it a friend was like here try this mango it's so good and I like literally could not put it down my throat like I thought I was going to like <laughs> lose my lunch all over the place oh my gosh. and now I love them they're so yummy I love mm -hmm. mangoes so just because you haven't liked something in the past doesn't mean you won't like something moving forward so giving yourself opportunities to try new things as well yeah huge Yes. Agreed. Especially with kids because kids are so like, they will love something one moment and the next minute they're like, that's disgusting. Are you trying to kill me? And then like the two <laughs> weeks later, they're like, actually, I forgot. I really like this. And you're like, you know, but yeah, I, I think we just, we're always changing and, and evolving. And that goes the same for our taste buds. Yeah. And I think that it's okay that if you don't like something today, but maybe to try it again in a month and see how you feel about it. But I think you're so right about making choices for yourself that you know that you're going to enjoy because this is not about punishing yourself, right? Yeah. And for a long time, that's kind of how I thought was like, well, if I enjoy this, I'm not doing it right. right. And isn't that so sad that that was like oh. the thought process that I had, but that's what was being fed to me. Well, and diet is a four letter word. Like that's how we look oh. at it. We look at yes. it like it's this profane thing and it's something to be despised or avoided because it's been associated with so many negative things. It has been directly associated with hating yourself, with right. just being so mean to yourself. When that's why when I talk to clients and they come in and sit down, then I'll say, how is your nutrition this week? How did you fuel your body this week? How did you treat yourself this week? Because I can't say how was your diet this week because it has such a negative yeah. connotation. Yeah, which is so frustrating because diet literally means the food that you ate. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't yep. mean anything else. But the diet industry has taken mm -hmm. it and twisted it and made it this yep. way like negative thing. But it's not. It's just like like what you said. It's your, your nutrition. What did you eat mm -hmm. today? Yeah. Well, and just to jump on that diet industry bandwagon for just a second, and I promise I won't stay on my soapbox too long, but <laughs> it is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. They make so much money, so much money telling us all sorts of conflicting information to keep us confused mm -hmm. so that we have to keep going back and trying different things or, you know, different fad diets or um, different supplementation. And even those supplements are isolated compounds that are not nearly as effective as eating right. in them in their whole form. And the whole form is derived from nature. That whole nature. form mm -hmm. is found in an apple. They have shown that an apple has an insane amount of vitamin C insane. But when you isolate the vitamin C in the apple, it 
is minuscule. It's very, very small. You wouldn't think that there's very much vitamin C, but when you consume it, your body gets a crazy amount of vitamin C from it because of the way your body takes all of the compounds within the apple and breaks it down in your body. So your body gets a ton of vitamin C from one apple. But when mm-hmm. we think about vitamin C rich foods, we often think oranges or I- or lemons or grapefruit or other citrus fruits. And you don't think apple because when they've done the study on it, they're just isolating the one compound, not actually how your body assimilates it. And so if you were to talk about that within the diet industry, then they're going to say, take this vitamin C supplement. And you're like, okay, that's fine. But I can get the fiber, the other nutrients, the the hydration and all the vitamin C from an apple that costs less, that tastes better and can be a snack. So I'm not buying that and the supplements Mm -hmm. or that and a snack, you know? Yeah. And I, I have a belief system that like, I believe God created our bodies and God created food. So he made our bodies to know what to do with that apple. Our yes. bodies don't really know what to do with that vitamin that was man-made in a lab. They don't really, they really don't. I mean, I, you're just going to be pretty much making like expensive pee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's If your body is detoxing itself correctly, right? Otherwise right. that stuff can really build up in your system and wreak havoc. And that's a whole other story. Yes. But I think like our bodies know and recognize real food. So it knows yeah. what to do with that apple, the vitamin C, the fiber, the, you know, like, it's really a beautiful, beautiful process. And sometimes we just have to like kind of get out of our own way. And yeah. Um, and yeah, it doesn't have to be this really complex thing. It can be really mm-hmm. simple. Even the protein isolates find, found in protein shakes, in most protein shakes, they build up in your liver. They build up in your body. Your body doesn't assimilate them correctly. And so, you know, you're talking about putting eggs or chicken or beef or these um, bone broth. These are the really great protein sources in your breakfast in the morning versus having a protein shake. Well, the protein shake says it has 30 grams of protein. But what does your body actually use? How does your body actually process that? You know, and so it's just bringing it back. I feel like the simplest way to think about it is to think what is grown in nature? What was put here on this earth to fuel our bodies that we were designed to eat? Because I don't think that on the seventh day, God created protein powder. No. Or, you know, he wasn't like, yeah. okay, and now I rested. So what sort of supplementation can I put in, in place for these yeah. people to consume? Because clearly the food that I made already wasn't good enough for them. Yeah. 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 You no, know, so I, I'm with you. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. The um, potatoes, totally fine to consume. I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, but can I eat a potato? White potatoes, red potatoes, yellow potatoes, sweet potatoes, eat all the potatoes. They are full of vitamins. They are so good for you. And when you take a potato that is a starch heavy root vegetable, really designed to fuel your body and you cook it and then you refrigerate it, you actually take that starch and turn it into a resistant starch which makes it even gentler, even lower on the glycemic index. So it doesn't make your blood sugar spike super high and and then crash. You have a really slow, steady source of um, fuel that way. Yeah, Um, I love that so much. I know, isn't it so amazing? I I think the other thing too, like you're talking about the potatoes and man, potatoes, they did, they got a bad rep there for a little while. That was really sad. For sure. Potato. But I was thinking about too, like when you're talking about eating real food, like what does that mean? And that can mean like eating seasonally too, because like right now it's winter. So it's like all those like root vegetables, like the potatoes, the carrots, the, all the like. And, and they have such deep, rich color. Like if you Mm -hmm. go and you find like a sweet potato, that's like, you know, probably locally grown, maybe you grew it, maybe your 
farmer next door grew it. I mean, if you cut that thing open, it is beautiful. It is like a work of art and Mm -hmm. it's, it's designed to be that way because our bodies take in, you know, those nutrients. But I think like if, if the least you can do is eat like seasonal diet, like what's growing around you locally right now, this time of year too, like that would benefit your health so much to be taking in those nutrients that, you know, again, God designed for this specific season of time, you know? I do on our Instagram, on the Whole Life Vitality Instagram page, I post things about eating seasonally. And so if you go through, it'll say, uh, for winter, I talked about cabbage and pumpkin and other squash and, you know, pears and, and apples and different things that are in season in the fall and how you can cook them and how you can eat them. And so if people follow along there, then I'm about to do a series on the winter vegetables and the winter fruits, because they are in, I didn't know until like a couple of years ago that avocados are a fall and winter fruit. I did not know that. I always think avocados in summer, right? Yeah. Yeah. But no, right. <laughs> they are, they are actually the best and the most seasonally fresh in the fall and winter. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I did not know that you just taught me yeah. something. See? Wow. See? Well, yeah. and I learned that from a Mexican friend who was making guacamole in the winter. And I was like, where did you find good avocados? She's like, nah, girl, they're the best right now. And let me tell you why. And I was like, wow, there we go. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Guacamole is a winter food. <laughs> I think guacamole is an all the time. Oh, food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when you, when you think about what avocados like like their kind of superpower is like they are like this really good fatty and we need that in the winter time we oh my gosh yes uh, our brains Mm -hmm. because we're not getting at maybe as much sunshine as we would normally be getting in these winter times and I think like the avocado that that are like our brains we're fatheads we need those fats you know yeah yes for sure Uh, avocados and walnuts And, you know, you think about, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, you know, like they talk about you eat nuts in the fall and winter, right? It's part of most, for most people, it's part of their, their Christmas celebration with a bowl of nuts on the table or whatever, because our body wants those fats during the Mm -hmm. winter. It wants the root vegetables. Uh, As you were talking about root vegetables, I was thinking about rutabagas and parsnips and beets and turnips and those other foods that are maybe maybe lower on the understanding list like people don't yeah. really eat those when I start listing those vegetables people are like I've never had a parsnip or I've never yeah. had a rutabaga but they are so yummy and they are so good roasted so yeah. just like any other root vegetable vegetable you take them you clean them you slice them up you toss them in the oven and roast them and oh my goodness they are so yummy um boiled Hang on, uh, turnips, well, turnips, oh. like mashed turnips, like a mashed potato. Oh my gosh. They're so yummy. Super good. Yeah. You can even mix them in with your mashed potatoes. Like if you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm with you on all the roasted vegetables. I love roasted veggies. I love the texture of them, you know, and yeah, some of the nutrients is going to be, you know, wiped away during the roasting process, but guess what? There's still a lot of nutrients there. So don't worry about it. It's fine. There are some vegetables that actually have different nutrients unlocked when you cook them. So maybe you lose some from eating it raw, but then you also gain some by cooking them. So I think that any, if any way that you're willing to eat your produce is the right way to eat them, you know, when it, when it comes to preparing a plate, because everyone's like, okay, then what should I eat? You know, so when it comes to preparing your plate, I tell my kids, because we're all going to easily get fat, we're all going to easily get carbohydrates. That is kind of the world that we live in. They're everywhere, right? Right. The thing that we're generally low on is protein and produce. And so when my kids come to me and they say, okay, mom, can I have this? And I'll say, yes, you can have that. But with your meal, you also need protein and produce. So what are you going to have for those two things? And if you make sure that every single time you sit down, you have a protein source and a produce source, it will dramatically shift. I was going to say your diet dramatically shift your nutrition. It will. Yes. 
because it's not about what we're subtracting here. It's about what we're adding in to properly fuel our bodies. And when you are satiated, then you're not craving all of these other foods that maybe you've gotten used to eating because mm-hmm. the foods that are made in labs, the foods that are made in factories, they have scientists working with those factories to put together the most addictive compounds they can find of sweet and salty. They add in other preservatives and additives to just give you this explosion effect in your mouth and your mind gets all excited. They are legitimately called excito chemicals or excitotoxins because your body gets so excited to have them and they're highly addictive. So we want to start introducing these other things into our diet that are not highly addictive because we can actually get the proper receptors from our stomach to tell us that we're full when Mm -hmm. we're eating real food. Mm -hmm. You sit down with a bag of Doritos and you're a whole bag in before you realize that you're (laughs) stuffed. Yeah. Because all those chemicals have been blocked. Your brain never got the signal saying that you're full. Right. Yeah, I know. And isn't that so scary to think about it's like sad. how they're like, you know, this, like these mad scientists just kind of in there working away yeah. to get us addicted to these foods. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like who benefits from us being addicted to these foods and not ever feeling full and only wanting more the food companies. Right. I know the answer yeah. to that question. Yeah. The, the food companies want us and, to buy more food and the farm, big pharma, not to be, not to be a soapbox again, but yeah. the, the medical industry right. wants us to, it's all about money. They want us to be yep. on these medications. They want yeah. us to continue through this sickness mill as we, you know, spend money through, um, what do they call it? It's not a, it's not a wellness industry. It's not a, the doctors don't have a wellness industry. They have a sickness no. industry. Yeah, because yeah. they just it's it's sick care. It's not health care. And I wish that yeah. that was the case. But the true method of getting to health care is to care for your health. And the way you mm-hmm. care for your health is to fuel your body in a way yeah. that it can actually assimilate the nutrients you're giving it. Can you imagine putting Doritos in your gas tank in your car? Truly, I know. I know your car wasn't designed to have Doritos fuel it. And neither right. was your body. <laughs> right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It would, I'm curious, like what, you know, like what does the world look like when we all really take accountability for our health? And when we all say like enough is enough and we're done with you guys and your, your, your science experiments and we're taking back our health. We're taking back our wellness because you're right. It is a sickness industry. It is not a wellness industry at all. And I think like you having that conversation with your kids about, you know, look at your plate, you know, make sure you have a protein or make sure you have this, you know, I think that's too where it starts. It starts with us as parents, educating our children and not in a, not in a like diet industry way where it's like, you can't have that, or you can't have that, or you can't have that. It's just more about like, Hey, when you eat that, what does your body say to you? Or, you know, make sure you get you know, your protein, because that's going to help you be full later. And like, I have two like athletes in my house. So we talk a lot about nutrition and, um, it's, it's, it's a conversation we're kind of having every day because like, they're both like weightlifting now. Like I have a 17 year old son. He plays football. He's at basketball practice right now. He's an all sport athlete. He also does powerlifting and we are in powerlifting season. And so I have my daughter, she's also starting powerlifting. She loves it. And I'm just like, how cool is that for them to be doing something that they love that will take, they can take throughout their entire life. Cause you know, team sports are great. Right. But when you can fall in love with like exercising your body and especially for women, the weightlifting is so important, you know? And, um, I just, we talk, we talk a lot about food, but not in a negative way, more of in a, Hey, I know you lifted today. Did you make sure you got your protein in? And Macy's yeah. always like, yeah. I did. I made sure I got my, because she knows she's not, she's like me. We're not a protein lover necessarily. So we kind of have to just be a little bit more aware of that. Um, And then there's Levi who just wants to eat all the meat all the time. 
Right. So that's how, that's totally how my, my son and my husband are. And then my, my daughter and I are kind of the way that you and your daughter are. And there are other ways to get in really good protein sources that aren't necessarily. Oh meat. yeah. You know, and, and I think that tofu and soy mm -hmm. again, over the years have gotten a really bad rap. I think that there is a way to take it in that tastes really yummy and is also really good for you. You know, like a, like a sprouted yeah. tofu or a fermented tofu or, you know, a tempeh or whatever, like you can really mm -hmm. get some good, some good protein sources from that, um, organic non-sprayed with pesticide, you know, like just, and yeah. it's cheaper than meat anyway, but oh, yeah. there, and even if you look at, I mean, the, um, spinach, baby spinach per pound. And granted, yes, I realize it's per pound, but like, <laughs> like ounce for ounce has more protein than beef. Yeah. Ounce for ounce. And so you don't just have to have animal meat and don't get me wrong. I'm not a vegan. I do eat animal meat. And so I'm not just saying, I'm not just pushing this like vegan right. or vegetarian lifestyle. I'm just saying there are so many ways to get those nutrients and they're mm -hmm. all found from things in nature. Yeah. Yeah. We're a big bean family. We love beans. Yes. Yeah. Especially Macy. She loves her beans. She's always loved, she's always gravitated toward beans. And I think that's so interesting because it's like, she's listening to her body, even at a very early, when she was like little toddler, yeah. she would, we would just open a can of beans and that was what Macy ate for dinner. You know, she, it was yeah. just easy. She loved it. She yeah. knew what she wanted. She knew what her body wanted. So I think for sure, there are so many different ways to get in real food nutrients in your body. It doesn't have to be a one size fits all situation. And two, 100%. it's like all about listening to your body. What is your body actually saying to you? Mm-hmm. Yep. I completely agree. Oh, I feel like we could just talk about this all day long. I could just I stay here for hours and we could talk and talk and talk, but I won't do that to our listeners today. I yeah. will say if you want more information, please let us know. We can come back here and give more practical ideas. That will also be on our social media. We can, um, you can talk to me directly. You can talk to Rebecca directly. I'll make sure that we put her social accounts on here. So you have ways to reach out to her. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for being here today and talking through nutrition. I know that in theory, we've made it this huge, really big, complicated thing, but yeah. it's not. And as soon as we can rewrite our mindset to it's simple, it's so simple. It's just what grows in nature, what was designed for us to consume. And then does it fall into that category or does it fall into a different category? And then we plan our meals accordingly and we plan our life around that. And let me tell you, over the last four to five years, it is the first time in my life that one, I have not done any kind of dieting. And two, I have ended the year healthier than I began the year. I don't hit December thinking about, oh man, in January, I'll, I, maybe I'll do this first of January or I'll feel better when, no, yeah. Christmas came and I felt good. The day after Christmas came and I felt good. The day after that, I felt good. You know, it because you just make these positive choices that compound over time to leave your body just feeling really fantastic. And yeah. I did indulge in holiday treats. And I still feel good because I still managed to maintain the other habits that I had. And so right. a little bit here or a little bit there doesn't undo a whole year or years of compounding those healthy habits. Yeah. So. Amen to that, my friend. Yeah. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much. You are amazing. Please reach out, friends, like and subscribe, follow for more. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.